For many of you who watch cable television, I'm sure you're aware that there's Top Chef, there's Top Chef Masters, there's Gordon Ramsay yelling at everybody, and chefs are kind of the new celebrities. And thanks to the celebrity of these chefs, guys like me, mere bartenders, I've been a bartender for 19 years, have gotten the opportunity to step out from behind my bar. Terrifying, without the bottles, without the booze, without the bar. Um, but it's something that allows you to grow. So for me, as I thought about this TED Talk, I started to think, all right, what can I do? Because there's a conceit. As many of you are aware, RE had to be the topic of conversation today. And not only RE, but RE vis-a-vis -vis TED. TED had to be something that inspires, something that motivates. And as I thought as a mere bartender, you know, without booze to serve all 600 of you at the same time, <laughs> I'm like, okay. And I thought to myself, hey, recipe. RE, that starts with RE. It's not re, it's not reuse, recycle, reform. Perhaps it's not so inspiring yet, but maybe I could take something I know and use that to inspire you. One thing I always think when I get up in front of a group of people is something one of my mentors, David Wondrich, told me, was as long as you don't get up in front of a group and talk about something you don't know, you'll be fine. So recipes, that's something I can do. And as a studious bartender and a modern man, I did what every bartender would do, I was thinking about going to the library and I was like, oh, I think I'll actually just Google recipe. <laughs> so as I Googled recipe, I saw a set of instructions for making food. We know that chefs have a new celebrity, so it's not necessarily for making drinks yet. And the second part is a way of doing something that will produce a particular result. And I'm thinking this second definition might be the thing that I want to get to. This might be my RE, my inspirational TED moment. So here are two definitions. And as I thought, I'm a bartender. I've been doing this for 20 years. Recipes are something that I had to study at first, and then I developed them. And then as an editor at Food & Wine, I helped you know, find other people's recipes and publish them. And then as a bartender, my recipes change over time. So I'm always working with recipes, but you guys aren't. And in many ways, what I do may be totally foreign to you, or in, for that matter, totally disinteresting. So as I thought about a hook, how can I bring everyone in? I thought about this quote that I've heard passed around every time I hear it, I smile. But it's this notion that everyone should wait tables at least one day in their life. And now, I'm now 37 years old. I have a kid. I'll be very honest. When Andy comes to PDT, I'm always there. I kind of sneak in at 9 o'clock to make sure that it seems as if I'm there every day and at all the times. But I'm not. And essentially what I needed to do here was I need to bring you guys in. So what I'm going to do is raise your hand. Don't be embarrassed now if you've never waited tables. All right. Now, I want you to be able to check this off your lifetime bucket list. So what I've decided to do today is you're hired, and you're going to come be a bartender with me. And over the course of the next eight minutes and ten seconds, I'm going to hopefully take you through my 20 years of my career, and then you don't have to worry about this whole notion of you never of waiting tables. So what is the first thing you think when you become a bartender? Obviously, you think of this guy. Everyone's sort of first image of being a bartender is it's always Tom Cruise. It's always this sort of happy-go-lucky guy. He's the life of the party. He's super happy. All the chicks are for all the ladies. All the dudes are interested in you. You're this amazing bartender. But behind the scenes, what you guys need to know is there are a lot of things to learn. You've got to learn the tools. You've got to learn the, the, all the bottles you're standing behind. You need to know what Bailey's is or versus Crown Royal. And you got to get to know your, your sort of colleagues, and you got to know how the bar works. And in many ways, my slide here says serving drinks to people. When you're trying to figure out all these things, it's like when you learn how to play basketball, and you got to dribble the ball, looking at the ball so you don't lose the ball. After many, many years of playing basketball, like Jason Kidd, these guys aren't even looking at the ball. They're seeing the court. So in many ways, as a young bartender, what you find in just trying to go through, uh, trying to keep it all together, you end up serving drinks to people. And that works for a little while until these guys walk into your bar. <laughs> and you're Tom Cruise and you think you know everything and you think you know everything to do. And one of these, let's just say one of them walks in the bar or the other one walks in, or both of them walk in the bar at the same time. It doesn't matter. And they order a martini. And of course, Jim Meehan was your manager. So Jim Meehan told you that the recipe for the martini is three parts gin to one part vermouth stirred with the lemon twist. And then Vince Vaughn comes in acting all cool. And he's like, yeah, man, I'll have a martini. And you go and you grab the bottle of gin and you start making it. And he's like, hey, 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 I don't want gin in my martini. And then you grab the bottle of vermouth and he's like, hey, 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 I don't want, you know, I want a dry martini. 
So you say to yourself, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't know the recipe. I don't know how to do this. And this brings me to an important point. I learned something working for a gentleman named Danny Meyer. Many of you have maybe heard of him. He wrote a great book called Setting the Table. And he said that service is a monologue and hospitality is a dialogue. And essentially what one of these two guys will teach you, hope probably Vince won't be as nice as Leo will over there, but what they'll teach you is that in order to give someone the drink that they want to have, you can't just use the recipe. You have to open up a dialogue with them. You get to need to learn who they are and how to make the best drink. And a lot of young bartenders are sort of inflexible about this. They think to themselves, well, I've learned from the best. I'm working in the best bar. You should have the drink the way I want to make it. And this is where some people stop in their evolution as servers. They just are that guy that only wants to make you that drink. And when you don't order that drink, they make you feel bad. And that's the mixology bar, generally, that many of you sort of walk out of and say, I'm never going to have a drink from one of these mixologists ever again. Now, the smart person, the one who listens to Danny, realizes that opening this dialogue is the key, that this hospitality is the key. And then you kind of become this guy. This is Spencer Tracy. He's got a whole tray of martinis. He's got a guest. And you'll notice something that's very different between Spencer and Tom Cruise. Tom had his head down. And I know everyone's always picking on Tom Cruise. It's easy. But... <laughs> Tom had his head down, and he's not focusing on what's going on. Spencer has his eyes up. He's making eye contact. He's connecting. He's happy. He's projecting how enthusiastic he is about serving these martinis to his guest. He is the embodiment of hospitality. And this is where I ended up in my career. I was so excited. I started winning awards. Everyone wanted to write about me. It was great. And then this is what happens so many times, and you'll realize this in your career as a bartender as well, is that as soon as you get good with at what you're used to doing and you're really excited about it and people start coming in to see you, you end up getting pulled aside by the boss and the boss says that it's time for a promotion. You're gonna become the bar manager. And as the bar manager, you sort of freak out. You're like, well, I'm not sure if I wanna take this, but you take that opportunity to be the bar manager. You step out from behind the bar and you realize, how am I gonna entertain these people? I've been serving them drinks, I've, I've sort of cool, they all know me, and I've spent so much time, I know who all of them are. How are these guys who work behind me going to represent the bar the way I do? I know this. And then what happens is this. These guys walk in the bar. And let's just say they all walk in the bar at the same time. You've got James Bond, who's ordering his martini as usual. Carrie's having her Cosmo. The dude likes his Caucasian with a little more Kahlua. None of the guys know it. And then you got the cowboy, who you're kind of trying to keep apart from James Bond because they're not really dressed the same today. And you realize that your role as the manager has now shifted from making drinks to, and mixing drinks to mixing people. It's not the bartender's job to make sure these guys all have a good time at your bar. It's you, you're the boss. So you've realized that you've gone from mixing drinks to mixing people. And you freak out because you don't have the tools. You don't have the tools. You don't have the booze. You don't have the drinks. You're standing on the outside of the bar and you're like, how do I do this? And you look at closely at it and realize that all those drinks tell you something about the person drinking them. In many ways, the cosmopolitan is this paragon of urbanity, the martini of sophistication, the Caucasian of leisure, and the shot of whiskey of ruggedness. And in many ways, these drinks mirror and idealize people. They're what people want to be. So as the bartender, which you've always understood, but now you understand better as a manager, your job is to create drinks and, that idealize people and make them feel good about it. As you step back as a manager, you realize you don't have those tools. You have to use another tool. Which brings me to my last slide. One of my good friends and mentors, Julie Reiner. You'll see she's got a smile on her face. She's just like Spencer Tracy. She's got a long, full cocktail in front of her. Her bar is clean and organized. And I'll just let you know that this slide is from a movie called Hey Bartender, which chronicles the journey of a young bartender into one of these fancy mixologists that I've been talking about. And the gentleman who gave me this slide, his name is Doug Terrell, and thank you, Doug. Uh, looking at Julie, we see once again that Spencer Tracy image. And as we step back, Julie's a manager. I'm a manager, you're a manager now. You've been through your journey as a bartender, and one of the things you realize is without drinks to idealize and mirror people, you have to use another tool. And you think about how the bartender, serving all those different guests, 
idealizes and makes them feel good and then goes and serves the next guest and they have to use a completely different technique to make James and the dude happy. And you realize that that bartender is like a bee pollinating flowers and making them all happy and that you as a manager have to find ways to pollinate people and make them happy. And how do you do that? Well, environment. You find it in a bar that if you keep it too cold, people won't check their coats. If it's too loud, if you turn the music up, people scream. If you and your colleagues are rude to each other, the guests will be rude to you too. On that side, if you are gracious to people, if you are generous to people, if you are kind to people, you'll find that they mirror that behavior. And in many ways, you realize that like a bartender and like a cocktail, which idealizes people and lets them be the person they want to be, that you are now that cocktail. And you are now that person that can idealize and make people feel great. And in this way, I would argue, as we go past our journey, as you've gone from being my bartender now for the last 19 years, as a young bartender, you were enthusiastic about what you were doing, but it was all about what you were doing. And as you grew, you realized that you had to open up a dialogue with others to try to find a way to make them happy. And then as a manager, you realized, after you became this great bartender, that you had to use different tools. And those tools were both the environment, creating an environment that lets people grow, and then eventually trying to be the person, the inspiration, that gets people in that environment to grow and to succeed. So today, my recipe, my RE, looking at bartending and looking at cocktails is for all of us to understand how the cocktail, in many ways, is a model for all of us to try to make each one of us look better by mirroring and idealizing them, by gilding the mirror. And that is my recipe for today. Thank you very much.